Fox Sports. We are Fox We are Florida. This homestand has brought a flurry of tape measure shots from Giancarlo. That ball's driven. Left center deep towards the sculpture. Goal! Giancarlo again. That was yesterday. What will he hit today? Marlins and Giants. Late afternoon in Miami, it's baseball time. Marlins Park, big crowd expected. Game three, a four o'clock start on a Saturday. The Giants of San Francisco, the Marlins of Miami, and each team has taken a game so far in this four game series. Hi, everybody. Rich Walks joined by Cliff Floyd along with Tommy Hutton. And for Giancarlo Stan, it's almost an everyday thing right now. Right. You know what I'd like. You know what I like about him the most is he's swinging the pitches in the strike zone. He's giving himself a chance every time he steps in the batter's box, and that's what it's all about. Is is you look at his April, his April, he's swinging, he's out, he's out on his front foot. He wasn't giving himself a chance. He wasn't staying back in May, just like he did last year. He sort of stayed, you know, batter stand through the zone, and he's hitting tape measure home runs. And Tommy, he's doing some damage, as they say. Well, sort of, not quite yet. I think in his next <laughs> contract, he's going to have to have an insurance clause. Just in case, but think about the home runs. The one off Jamie Moyer off the scoreboard. They did get it fixed, but look at that scoreboard. It's worth about eight hundred thousand dollars. How about the next home run off Vogel song? This one landed on the bar in the Budweiser balcony. Look at three hundred thousand dollars if there had been some serious damage up there. And the one he hit last night against Tim Lincecum went toward the home run sculpture, which is worth. Over two million dollars. Red grooms wouldn't have been happy, but everything's okay. But you got to look for that insurance clause in his next contract. And Cliff, I think it, impressively, it's not just home runs. He's driving the ball to center. He's driving to right center. Yeah, he's driving the ball to right center, as you mentioned. Uh, he's standing on the ball, curveballs. I like that about him because the one thing we saw that he's swinging a lot of curveballs in the dirt. Now these balls are up a little bit, and he's standing on them. But I mean, you know what, Tom? If, if they would have gave me something to hit when I was hitting in, in, in some life, maybe I could have hit a couple sculptures. No, you could. No, uh, I can't. <laughs> Let's take a look at the starting pitchers. The lefties are on the menu for this afternoon. Madison Bumgarner, Mark Burley. Bumgarner's tough and a, a lineup kind of pieced together by Ozzy. Burley's only faced the Giants a couple of times in 03 and 08. So you like this matchup, Cliff? It's lefties today. Yeah, I definitely like it. I, you know, I, of course I like my Burley because you know what you're going to get. He's going to give you the opportunity to win a ball game. He's going to stay in the ball game. And the boys swing the bat a little bit. They might come out with a victory. We'll see. It's been an exciting series so far. A series of comebacks and near comebacks. June is around the bend. The Marlins trying to continue what is a record-setting May.
Marlins and Giants moments away. Let's go out to center field. Craig Mendervini, Jeff Conine. All right, thank you very much, Rich, and uh, good afternoon again, everybody. Get some baseball going. The Marlins are having a great month of May, which is really good because do we have to look at June? Ooh, uh, June is looking a, a wow. tad bit scary. Glad the Marlins are doing well this month because they're going to have their hands full next month. Well, you want to be playing great baseball when you go into this month, and the Marlins, are, almost no matter what, are going to be doing that. They've already set a, uh, a mark here. But now the yellow or the home games, and you look at the teams they're playing, it's a who's who list of contenders for playoffs. And the Jays might be the only one that wouldn't be a top contender, and they've really been a very good team over the last few years too. Yeah, they're just unfortunately in a really tough division. Uh, even the Red Sox, who are only one game under five hundred right now, but they had a horrible start. They're coming back playing much better baseball. Tampa Bay is going to be there. Atlanta is going to be there. The Phillies, obviously, are going to be there. So uh, you're facing uh, excellent teams in June. Not to say the Marlins aren't going to have a winning record. You're not no. setting them up for failure. But they're really going to have to be on top of their games to come out of June with a winning record. Uh, 21 games combined over 500, And the only team that's not over 500 is the Red Sox. And you know how good they are. Although they're a game under 500 right now. And very well will be over 500. By the time the Marlins meet them six times in June. All right, big story for this ball game. Something to watch. It's got to be an exciting moment for Donovan Solano. He seems like a pretty cool cucumber. But Jeff, when you're going to a position that you're not used to playing at all, how much pressure on him today to play left field? You know what? It's very nerve wracking. Uh, I only spent like ten days in left field before I made my first start in Kansas City in left field, and it's uh, it's different. You know, you're not in batting practice. You're not relaxed. It, for real, you got balls coming at you that you don't see really hit like they do in batting practice. So, uh, But he's been working out there hard. Uh, Gary Thurman says he's a good athlete. He's been doing a good job. Keep an eye on him. It's going to be fun for him making a start for the Marlins in left. Plum gone up early. It's a lefty-lefty Saturday afternoon matchup. Richard Tommy with the call next. Ball, Mark Burley is pinch a penny brings you the first pitch as Burley gets set to deliver to the left handed hitter Gregor Blanco Burley misses high it is one and oh Mark Burley making start number 10 he's at four and four and ERA in the low threes and that pitch popped up foul and out of play and Burley has uh, put it together nicely his first five games if you remember he didn't pitch all that badly but he was one and four his next uh, games he's won four so four and four overall Mark Burley will keep everybody off balance and that's his game plan all the time 
Little slap roller. Reyes hustling. Got it. Throws. Safe at first. Gregor Blanco beats it despite a terrific play by Jose Reyes. And the Giants continue to get the top of their order on base. Blanco has six hits already in this series. The one guy we see do that a lot is Bonifacio. And Blanco with that play is almost uh, halfway out of the box as he slaps it, has some speed. And Reyes did everything right. Just couldn't get it. Yeah, he did. And, you know, I, I guess with uh, Blanco in that situation, I mean, you have to be table service. And when getting on base early in the game is always key, especially for a Giants lineup that's, uh, that hasn't been hitting a lot, but hitting a lot lately. One guy that's not in that lineup, Brandon Crawford. In the two spot, it's Ryan Terrio. Melky Cabrera is on deck. It's the top of the order for the Giants. In this one, the Marlins winners by a 7 to 6 score. Last night, Burley to the plate. And he misses high. The count's now 2 and 0. Oh. Now, Burley early in the season was pitching great and wasn't getting run support. His last two starts, he gave up four runs in each of them. But he got a slew of runs. He got 15 runs and run support. Yeah, that's, the, that's the one thing with baseball. So funny. Uh, you just never know. And I think that's why when you was talk, when, you know, when the Marlins were struggling in April, uh, you know, it was sort of that, well, you know, you, you want the offense to come around because you don't want to waste these pitching opportunities. And, you, you know, at some point the pitch is going to come back down to earth. And as you see lately, it's, it's been coming down a little bit. Yeah, you're right. Last uh, last time through the rotation for each of the five starters, not the best of starts. Burley's falling behind 3-0, and and he's going to go to first and chase Blanco back. Giants have been active on the bases. They have run against the Marlins. Marlins have run against the Giants in this series. That's sort of both of these teams them all, uh, you know, to run a little bit, put the ball in play, hit and runs. Mark Burley throws a strike, and now it's 3-1, and one, and if the Giants are interested in running, which not many people are against Mark Burley. We'll see if Bruce Bochy puts the game in motion. Burley, one of the best pickoff moves in the game. He picked me off a couple times before. Just a couple? Just a couple. Well, you know, you, you can't run against certain guys like that. You have to make sure you're going to get a good jump. Terrio pulls it. Hanley digs it. Out there, the turn. Oh, what a turn in time. Omar Infante, the feed from Hanley Ramirez, and the Marlins get a big double play. A couple of really nice things happen right here. First of all, Hanley, I don't know if early in the year he makes this backhand pick and plants so he gets something on the throw. The throw a little low, but Infante has a way of just picking it, and look at how quickly he turns and something on the throw. Yeah, these guys get a lot of opportunities to work together now um, because in spring training they didn't get that opportunity as much. But they got him out there enough in spring training so they could get the feel of one another. And that's what you have to do when you have a new position for Hanley and then, you know, not working together from third base, uh, that, that double play combo. As the dust settles from that double play, it's worth noting that Melky Cabrera is not only the hottest hitter on the planet, but he absolutely eats Mark Burley alive. Cabrera, in his career, is 17. Hey, if, if you're afraid of things, don't look at these numbers. <laughs> 17. <laughs> Of 27, he's hitting 630. I'm telling you, it, it's, it's such a feeling. It is. It's such a feeling to have that when you're going against a pitcher. You feel so good in the box. He and got him. Oh, that oh, save the ball. Get the ball for Burley. There will now be a brief ceremony in front of the mound. <laughs> Mark Burley gets to the first.
and a good crowd. A four o'clock start on this Saturday afternoon. The Marlins will come to the plate in this orderly fashion against Madison Bumgarner. Jose Reyes leads it off. Omar Infante is at second base. Hanley Ramirez at third. Giancarlo Stanton likes life right now in the cleanup spot. Logan Morrison behind him. Donovan Solano in left field. His first big league start in a position he's played one game professionally in the outfield. Chris Coughlin knows how that feels. He's in center. John Buck is a catcher, and Burley will hit ninth. And I'll tell you, uh, Rich, uh, not an easy assignment. 22-year-old Madison Bumgarner. You see it numbers. Good year, 285 ERA. Have a slinger. Whips the ball. Could be tough on left-handers. And a first-round pick of the Giants fits in with a, a terrific rotation that has uh, kept them where they are right now. And it was his emergence that really allowed the Giants to trade Jonathan Sanchez for the incredibly hot Melky Cabrera. Bumgarner made his arrival just in time in late 2010, and he was a very good postseason pitcher that World Championship season. Reyes hits a fly ball down the right field line. Blanco is tracking it, and he's there, and he almost overran it. And he makes the catch. Uh, let's take a look at the defense for the Giants this afternoon. Melky Cabrera, Pagan, and Blanco. They've been out there all the game so far. Arias at third. Emmanuel Burris gets the start at short. Terrio and Brett Pill on the right side. Buster Posey's caught all three games so far. And here is Infante in this ball game. You've got two of the top six hitters in the National League in terms of average. Infante at 340 right now is sixth in the National League. And a fastball that misses down low. I just love the way Infante just, you know, he, he has a professional bat every single time. His bat head is staying through the zone. He looks so comfortable with the plate, and it's always good, of course, when you're hitting 340. Um, but you know it's just awesome to see his he's always giving himself a chance to to, to, to get on base early as Tapper, he makes the first out Tapper down to Arias who throws out to first in time to get him. What's the scouting report say on Madison Bumgarner. Well we're going to show you we're going to check on the scouting report brought to you by Coventry Healthcare. you see that real easy deliberate delivery is a big breaking curveball not a bad hitter either when he steps in to hit. Hanley Ramirez. Hanley one for seven in the series. The the big pop obviously has come from Giancarlo Stanton in this series with the two homers and five hits. Stanton has driven in five runs. And the Marlins last night finally got some oomph from the bottom of their order. Hanley takes a strike last night especially in that key sixth inning. A walk to Morrison Brian Peterson a base hit. John Buck a sack fly and then Chris Coughlin the maybe the most impressive of the swings the three run homer and that chased Tim Lincecum Marlins went on to win the ball game hold on late and win it seven to six and jump Lincecum's ERA up to six point four one he hasn't looked good at all at, at all this season and um, you know I, you can't pinpoint one thing, but I think the one thing I liked about the Marlins last night moving forward was the fact that they had a plan. His, fa his, his fastball, he pretty much didn't have a, a good command with, and his breaking pitch was the one that they was, you know, just just all over last night. And, that, and that's one thing you have to have when you're facing guys uh, that you know to shut you down, as he did early in the game. Uh, you have to stay with the game plan, which was later in the game. He got his curveball over the plate a little bit, and they was shellacking. Pitch misses in the as a. Example the Marlins have 94 walks in the month of May, and that is best in the National League. Arizona has 83, Atlanta 83, the Mets 83, and the Giants 82. Those are the most patient teams this month. Hanley goes down, Bumgarner gets a strikeout, crossfire lefty, and a 1 2 3 first for the fish.
Nation brought to you by H.H. H. Gregg. In Miami, scoreless ball game. Mark Burley, Buster Posey, and Burley misses outside. Rich Waltz, Tommy Hutton, Cliff Floyd with us in the booth at Coventry Healthcare, second inning. Burley gave up an infield hit to Gregor Blanco, and that's it. He's got Posey, Angel Pagan, and Brett Pill. That ball to left field is hit pretty well, and Solano is back, and he makes the catch. Now, the story with Solano is this. One game in the outfield in single A. They told him he was going to play left field. He's had a day to prepare. He doesn't have a glove, so he had to borrow Emilio Bonifacio's outfield glove. Yeah, well, you know, I, I like the idea because, you know, I guess one thing it does, it helps you keep, you know, keep everything, keep them versatile. And, and it helps the club in terms of going out there. And all the boys on the team are probably saying, listen, just go out there, catch the ball, make the basic play, and keep it moving, and don't worry about the, you know, if you die for a ball, it's 50-50 for even a normal outfield. So I think he'll be fine. You get that bat going, you all, you have to find a place on the play. I think as an infielder, all he has to do is make that routine play, Get the ball back in as quickly as possible to the cutoff, man. That's it. Well, the funny thing is when I went to ask him in the locker room if he had played any outfield, he said, no, nah, not at all. And I looked next to him, and there was Chris Coglin. And I said, well, just ask Coglin because he went through the same thing. And Cogs looked over the big smile and said, yep. <laughs> when he got to the big leagues, he got one game at second base, and then Coglin was in left field at Coors Field. A lifelong wow. infielder playing the outfield. That's a big place to play the outfield. That ball pulled foul and out of play. A long one off the bat of Angel Pagan. And Pagan's been one of those giants, Tommy, that has really hurt the fish in this series. Well, all you have to do is look at what Blanco and Cabrera and Pagan, what they've done. And Pagan, four hits out in front of a changeup. Reyes. Rushes it to first and gets the out. So two outs for Mark Burley here in the second. Of course, this series concludes tomorrow. Then on Monday, on Memorial Day, at 1 o'clock, a three-game series with the Nationals starts here at Marlins Park. It's a Memorial Day edition of an Outback Military Monday. And on Wednesday, fans get an Emilio Bonifacio T-shirt courtesy of Leon Medical Centers. Marlins.com. For tickets or 1 877 Marlins. Here's Pill, the big first baseman. He pops it up. Morrison comes to the rail, and it's out of play. Rich, those promos are a little tougher with Burley pitching, aren't they? Absolutely. <laughs> In fact, I did not even read that word for word. You just you pick sentences, you read the sentences, and you move on because Burley's ready to go. As a defender, you love him. You love him, especially he's going to help Solano. He's going to help all the guys because he keeps you in the ball game, keeps you on your toes. And you have to, you know, you, you keep the game quick, keep the game moving. Uh, you keep guys in the game and in the moment. What does it do to a hitter? Oh, it frustrates you because now you have to, you have to, you know, first you have to know the umpire, first uh, the home play umpire's name. And so you can say, oh, hey, hey, Mark, hold on. Give me time out for a second just so you can slow down and, and, and keep him, you know, keep him honest. Got in on him. Solano went back. Now comes charging in. Hey, no problem. Left field in the big leagues. Piece of cake. I'm all over it. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get in the lineup for Donovan Solano. And everybody's having a good time with him. Coming up, Giancarlo Stanton. I suggest you stay where you are.
Marlins Béisbol en Español es presentado en SAP por Coventry Healthcare of Florida. In Miami, Marlins and Giants scoreless. Even Lil Wayne wants to come out. Easy. Wants to come out and see Giancarlo swing the stick. Yeah, you got the little tank top on each other. Miami Vice style. <laughs> Stanton, a, a bullet, and it's to the left of Arias, and it's going to the wall. We talked about that the other day. Someone asked. Are you impressed with all these tape measure homers? What's even more impressive are the balls that he hits to the left of a third baseman that get to the wall or to the left of the shortstop on the ground that get to the wall. Watch this. And Gapper he hit in the left center a, a couple of weeks ago. This one, you figure, okay, it's just by the third baseman. Well, the left fielder, Cabrera, can't even cut it off, and it goes to the wall, and Stanton has himself a stand-up double. By the way, if I'm Lil Wayne, I'm not wearing a tank top around Stanton. No. <laughs> you definitely not. But you know, those balls he's hitting, I mean, as an outfielder, you try to get the angle, he doesn't give you an angle. That's the one thing about Stanton is he's hitting those balls so hard, and, and, and Lucky has no chance to get to those balls. You think you do because it's a normal hit, and that's your reaction. All right, here's an interesting at bat. Logan Morrison has been struggling, and he's been pulling the ball a lot, but he's in an at bat now where he probably wants to pull the ball. Against the lefty that he's actually had some success against, Madison Bumgarner. This is this game will drive you nuts. And Logan Morrison, all BP. I watched him. He really had some good swings, but he was staying back and trying to hit everything the other way. Now he's in an at bat where he really shouldn't try to do that. He should try to pull a ball. Right. You know, I, and I guess every once in a while you wanna you wanna face the lefties. Because it keeps you honest as a left handed hitter. It keeps that right shoulder in and gives you a chance to stay on the ball. If you're pulling off, you saw him last night again, Lesson struck out a couple of times. Ball was away, he was pulling off the ball. Tonight, this gives him a chance. Today, this gives him a chance to stay on the ball with Bumgarn on the mound. Just so you just keep you honest, keep you feeling good. Uh, and, and he's big to this lineup, especially when you, uh, you, need, the, you, need, the, you need the power at the bottom, as we talked about. Well, Morrison and Coglin good against Bumgarner. Coglin, two for three. Morrison three for six Stanton by the way is now five for seven with four doubles against Bumgarner. He may not see a good pitch to hit the rest of the day especially if they're met on base. Well, I wouldn't pitch to him if I'm Bumgarner. I would take my chances which is the importance of getting Logan Morrison going in the five spot. And he got a pitch to pull and he hit it hard. I think the. The interesting thing about Lomo, the puzzling thing, I guess would be a better way to put it, is that he hit 310 in April. And remember, he didn't have consecutive starts a lot because the ball club was being real careful with his knee. But he hit 310 in April. And you have to be consistent. I mean, that's the one thing with Lomo that you're looking for, consistently staying, uh, you know, on the field, consistently staying in the strike zone. And that's how you, that's how you get better throughout the season, especially when you're dealing with uh, a knee issue because you don't have your legs as you would want your legs to be there. And that's what Ozzy, you know, when you hear Ozzy talk about giving him that two month period to go through, you know, wrestling him out the flights, uh, giving him day, uh, day off, uh, day game out the night game. That helps you, especially, uh, you know, when you're going through low mo situation. It's always tough. So I give him credit for battling through these type of situations. Best opportunity for either team early in this ball game. a lead off double by Giancarlo Stan, his 12th of the season. Morrison. Stayed on the breaking ball. And the count is two and two. Bumgarner is five and three. And as Tommy pointed out, he's just 22. He made 33 starts last year. In the minor leagues, he was 34 and six. And it didn't take him long to get here. With an ERA of an even two. Comes a 2 2 pitch. Morrison to left. Cabrera makes the catch. Stanton bluffs. And there's an out. Here comes Solano. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Miami Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. So here is Solano and He's getting a start. Look at he's two for three, and that's the extent of his big league experience. 
And it's tough. I mean, he, he was playing every day in AAA, and then you come up, and, and now your role changed. You have to adapt. And I think the one good thing that they have is Aguado Perez was a role guy at some point in his career. Towards the end, he was a role guy, so he can help him in these situations and get him on a, in a good routine. And that's that's what he's going to need, uh, you know, with the role he has. And he's not going to probably play every day, uh, but he has to be ready when he's in there. Bogarder brings in a strike. Left-handers uh, are, are going to be tough on the Marlins over the next uh, week or so because with Austin Kearns out, with Gabby Sanchez in the minor leagues, those are two right-handed bats that you'd like to have in a lineup like today. Yes, sir. Bumgarner misses in with the fastball. And good news. I uh, checked on uh, Gabby Sanchez and his stats in six games. He's six for 18, hitting awesome. 333. Seven walks, a 538 on base percentage. Unfortunately, you have to go down sometimes, but I think it was definitely needed for for Gabby, uh, you know, just to relax a little bit. Line drive, right center field. Donovan Solano is three for four in the big leagues, and he gives the Marlins a one nothing lead. Absolutely incredible. He's doing just what he did all spring <laughs> training. <laughs> That's why defense doesn't matter so much. Yeah, huh? that guy had a fantastic sign. He hasn't had time to make one for Solano yet. <laughs> oh, this is just beautiful hitting. Looked like a little breaking ball. He let it get to him. Stayed inside. Bingo. RBI. Right where you want to hit. And an early run for the Marlins. A one nothing lead against Madison Bumgarner. Here's Coglin now. Chris with a big moment last night. The Marlins came back to tie the game dramatically in the sixth. Tim Lincecum was wobbling. And Lincecum hung a breaking ball and Coglin hit it out. His first homer of the year, his second career homer against Lincecum. Tell you what, Solano just saw the uh, A move of Bumgarner, just barely got back. That would have gotten me, Tom. <laughs> that's a great move. Yeah, that's Andy Pettit. That that sets that's nasty. I mean, it looks like he's coming to the plate. And that's one thing you, as, as a you know when you're over there first base, you have to give him that credit and stay there. It's, it's tough to get a secondary lead when you have a guy like Bumgarner in that type of move. Coglin pops it foul and out of play. And here's Coglin last night. Cog's got that little hanging breaking ball from Lincecum. His first home run since last June against Arizona. And Cog's going to get an opportunity to play. He has to take advantage of this. And that's how you take advantage of the opportunity. You go up there and you swing the bat and you have a plan. And like I talked about earlier, he saw Lincecum. All the guys saw Lincecum throwing his curveball up in, up in the zone. And they swung at it. They swung at it and had good results. Ground ball up the middle. Terrio gets it out there. And the relay's not in time. Manuel Burris, the shortstop, coming across the bag. Coglin is aboard. There are two outs. Solano is erased. And here comes John Buck. Yeah, first two games of this series, we saw Brandon Crawford, left handed hitter. So Bruce Bochy gets the righty in there. Burris. Good hard slide, too, by Solano. I love that. I love going hard at second base. It'll give you a chance to stay in there. never know what happens with John Buck. Get the pitcher up. Bumgarner over to first. Here's a look at the slide at second. Perfect. Contest the bag. Still able to touch the bag. That's what you have to do. A dugout so loose. You, you love the dugout. They always smiling. Reds is always keeping it loose. That's why Solano's having a good time, man. All the guys come up and they feel like they're at home. You know, and that's, that's always a good feeling when you have a young bunch of guys. Uh, that gives the opportunity to play. Reyes is going to always be laughing. I walked in the, I walked in the clubhouse today. Yo, you, played with, you played with Reyes. Uh, and so I play with him. Like. Yeah. Hey, he has a good time every time he comes to the ballpark. Whether you're down and, and out, you know, he'll always get you going. And you have to have those type of guys. That's one thing you think about the, the guys that the Marlins added in the offseason. Reyes being Mr. Energy. Burley is as loose as they come. 
even when he's pitching, he's loose. He's, he's not one of those uptight pitchers. He's that, loose on the bench yes. when he's pitching. Yeah. And he's always on the bench. That's what I love. He's always supporting his teammates. And as you see, Zambrano, he's always out there. Buck takes in, and it's one and one. And Zambrano has, has been, by all accounts, model citizen, great teammate, and uh, upbeat, positive himself. Yeah, you know, I had a chance to talk to him in spring training. I, I, I stopped the interview and had to say, hey, are you okay? <laughs> are you good? <laughs> Buck hits a sharp ground ball. Burris at short gets the out at second. Inning over. A double by Stan and Donovan Solano. An RBI single. Made his big league debut, called up by the Marlins after a very good spring. And now all of a sudden he finds himself starting in a position he's never played before and driving in a run. I mean, it's not like they hit him in the eighth spot in the order. Solano is hitting sixth behind Logan Morrison and in front of Chris Coughlin and John Buck. And one thing that he is going to have his eye on, Gary Thurman is position he's going to stay at the very end of the dugout as close to Solano as he can get and then when the inning starts he'll get up a little higher and he'll help him out with with where to be he'll let him know yeah he's he's right there he's as he's as close to Solano as he can get <laughs> it always helps I'll tell you Joaquin Arias now Emmanuel Burris Madison Bumgarner Thurman has his his pupil position. Sharp one. Hanley, who has made all the plays over there at third base. That's one of the stories about the, the Marlins this year. And you don't hear about it nationally, but Hanley Ramirez has been one of the best fielding third basemen in the National League. Look at that. It's like a non-story now. He's, he's played the position so well. And Polanco really hasn't played the entire season. No, not, you know, um, when you look at Hanley and how he accepted his role in spring training, I think that definitely helped, you know, for the psyche of him and moving forward. It was like, yo, I'm going to accept this, move forward. I want to win. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's shown. Manuel Burris now, big lollipop curve from Burley for a strike. Burris, a switch hitter. One of three switch hitters in the Giants' order. Then you got Bumgarner. Burley trying to get through the bottom third of the order. That one... Hit down the line and Solano over to get it. Round first, Burris trying for second. Here's the throw. And Infante been able to pick it. They may have had him. We have seen on any left fielder, any outfielder, this a lot in these home games. Outfielders have to play a little bit deeper. And Solano plays it well. He, he backhands it, comes up with a strong throw. Just got a little short hop, though, to Infante. On the money, and I think he gets Burris. Yes, he does. Good effort. He doesn't show up, and he definitely out right there. 
But that's on the other hand, the, the other hand, the Giants are taking advantage. They know he hasn't been out there. Well, you know what? I think at some point if they keep taking advantage. They will get burned because He'll that was a great somebody. play. That was a great hot, weighted, uh, great route to that ball, and it gave him a chance to make a good throw. Uh, you know, but when you haven't been out there, that's the type of throw you get. But he has a strong arm, and that's one they see. All right now, Bumgarner, who swings it from this side of the plate, chops it to Hanley, backs up on a couple of hops, and then flips across the diamond in time. Burris is still at second. Gregor Blanco comes up. Mark Burley gave up an infield single to him in the first inning. Matt Kane, Ricky Nolasco, a 12:30 start for Marlins Live, a one o'clock start for the final game of this four-game series. Didn't we see that matchup in San Francisco? Kane and Nolasco. It was a 2-1 game. Be interesting to to see how Ricky throws. Nolasco, of course, got to career win number 69 and his fifth of the year, his last time out in beating the Rockies. Owen one on Gregor Blanco. For the Giants, Blanco has to be a, a real pleasant surprise this year. A guy that did not play in the big leagues last year. He was in triple A with a couple of organizations. He's playing good defense. He's been getting on base. Smokes it into right field. That's a base hit. Burris round third coming home. Stanton with a good arm. Throw to the plate. He is safe. Buck got the ball there, but he couldn't beat him to the corner of the plate. And Burris slides in safely. Burris got a great jump on that ball, and that's what you have to do. That's why Flanders sent him two outs. You have to take that chance in that situation. I'm about ready to put Gregor Blanco in the Hall of Fame right now. <laughs> this guy's unbelievable. Strong throw, just a little offline, but you're right about Burris's jump. He was off and flying. Yeah, it had to be a perfect throw to get him. And so Blanco, two for two, and he raced a second on the throw to the plate. And here is Terrio now. Early with a 77 mile an hour changeup. Blanco ups his average now to over 360 against the Marlins in about 70 at bats. Terrio bounced into a 5 4 3 double play his first time up. Smokes that one foul. And it's 0 and 2. Not a lot of the Giants have a lot of at bats against Mark Burley. Terrio is now 4 for 14. They certainly met when the Cubs and White Sox played each other in interleague play. I'm sure they all surrounded Melky Cabrera. Said, what, <laughs> what's he have? And Melky probably has no clue because he goes up there blindfolded. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Cabrera's on deck. Giants have scored. And a 1 2 coming to the Riot, Ryan Terrio. It was amazing playing with the Riot in Chicago. They had the t shirts, the Riot. I was like, what do these shirts mean? Didn't put two and two together. I guess that's the high school education that I have. But I <laughs> just didn't put the riot and Terrio together because I didn't want to spell that. You know, it was spelled like that. But well, the unique uh, thing was it. I mean, the other guy on that other end of that double play combination, Mike Fontenot, they were teammates in college yes. as well. Well, you know, I played with both of them, so I heard the LSU stories every day. <laughs> Here's the one too. He lays off that changeup, which just missed. Or at least 2 2. And all of a sudden, Terrio isn't swinging at the changeup. And so now the count goes to 3 and 2. It's one thing about, you know, when you have these type of players that the, that the Giants have, they're, they're pesky guys. You know, the guys who are going to put the ball in play, hit the ball around a little bit. Those type of guys tend to give Burley a little bit of harder time because they always, you know, they always fouling off balls, tough pitches, and they get the hits 
Uh, Burris hit the ball pretty solid, but you know these guys are just hitting balls, you know, all over the place a little bit because they are pesky type of players. You almost need that type of hitter at AT&T Park in San Francisco. You do. I, I, I did not like that park, especially for a power guy. Well, I thought I was a power guy. Uh, and, and you go there and you, and you you know you get that 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 breeze coming off the bay, hit some balls. You thought you hit them pretty good and they, they wouldn't go anywhere, but you hit the ball in the gap. That park is a gap type of hitter park. The other thing too, you'd have to think Terrio is going to get a decent pitch with Cabrera on deck. Yeah, well, <laughs> he should. Blanco still at second. Hanley charges and gets the out at first. But the Giants draw even the double by Burris. Blanco chases him home 1 1 to the bottom of the third. Sports Florida brought to you by Toyota visit your local Toyota dealer today for great deals on an amazing lineup of Toyota vehicles Toyota moving forward and by AT&T the nation's largest 4G network AT&T rethink possible Madison Bumgarner to Mark Burley Mark Wagner the home plate umpire calling strike one. Mike Malinsky down at first, Wally Bell at second. Mike Winters is at third base. That's your umpiring quartet, and everybody gets a shot at home plate in this series as they rotate around. See Malinsky behind there tomorrow. 0 oh 2. Pearly. It's a tough matchup it for Pearly. <laughs> he had the back end headed towards the first base dugout. Leaned out over the plate, just got a piece. Last few times I come to the ballpark, Burley has always has a bat in his hand. He likes to hit. He does. Ozzy Gian has to chase him out of the cage because the hitters, or the pitchers, generally come in and sneak in before the hitters take their swings. Gian will let him hit a couple line drives and then chase him out, and say, "Hey, look, don't just don't get hurt." Well, I like the fact that they get a chance to hit, so they see it's not that easy when they want to, you know, chirp a little bit about the hitter, it's like, "Hey." Why well, you didn't hit that ball? Like, well, you know, you get a chance going to the cage, and it's actually sometimes a little simple for them in the cage because the BP guy don't want to hit them, so they throwing the ball right over the dish, and they hitting it pretty good. But you know, they get they get they get a little glimpse of what we go through every day. Struck him out, and we check in with Craig Minervini. Craig, hey guys, thank you very much. Uh, last night, Joe Espada called it the toughest call he's had over there as third base coach, and trying to determine whether to send the runner or not. Here's the situation. Marlins were down two, sixth inning, one out, seven, eight, nine hitters up next. First and second. Look how far down he got. Almost a home plate before he stopped Giancarlo Stanton. He said he was worried about the throw, but he said most of the time here, the giant outfielders have been squeezing the middle, so he felt because the ball was down the line, he'd have a chance to bring in Stanton. 
He was really relieved, he said, when Buck had the sack fly after that. He was worried about the double play, the lack of hitting in the bottom of the order, and certainly Coughlin and Homer, so it turned out not to be a key play. As Reyes bloops one here, and he's going to find that big outfield for the Marlins. Espada said in this ballpark, any time, like, for example, this situation, the ball is at the right near that 392 mark, he said he could score anybody on the team, including his slowest runner. Left field gap. The fast guys like Reyes, Bonnie, Peterson should score any time the ball hits the gap. A slower runner, then you got a little bit of a question. But he said, generally speaking, yeah, it's probably a little easier to make the call at this stadium. But tight moment of the game for him last night. Guys. It turned out to be the right call and certainly is not an easy job. No, it isn't. Uh, Joe Espada does a, a terrific job down there. And we talk about his aggressiveness. You, you try to put a little pressure on the outfielders or whoever's throwing the ball, relay man, whoever it might be. Bob Garner to the plate against Infante with a strike. Now remember, we've determined Bob Garner has a pretty good move, and Reyes was on his way back to first when that one came to home plate. He has to hold his ground. He's, you know, it doesn't matter with his move. Uh, Posey has a pretty good arm, but you know, Reyes can outrun anybody. So just hold his ground, and, and I think he's just trying to pick up where where bum gunner's release point is, is he a be. guy is, where his knee is going to go yeah you know? cliff is he a guy that uh, you, you might even have to guess on sometimes as soon as he lifts that leg as soon as he lifts going. it up yeah because even if reyes goes appeal has to make a perfect throw sometimes to get him out sort of like the same throw would be coming from second i mean from from uh bus opposing behind the dish base runners three of four in stolen bases this year and this is start number 10 for Bumgarner, so not a lot of guys have tried. Last he's year. the guy. Let me cut you off, Tommy. But he's the guy that you, you watch tape of and pick up that 1A move, as you talked about, Tommy, before. The, you, you, you watch him before so you can go, okay, this is what he does. This is where his head moves and sort of pick it up. Rez is that good where he watches a little tape and he knows exactly what he's doing. Infante cracks it into center field, the base hit. A little station to station baseball here. And that'll bring up Hanley Ramirez with runners first and second and one out. Family Sunday is tomorrow, 110. Come on out early for Snapshot Sunday. First 5,000 kids get a Mark Burley wall flag, courtesy of Stanley Tools. Plus, kids can run the bases after the game in the Diamond Dash. 1877 Marlins or go to Marlins.com for tickets. Hanley was called out on strikes in the first. And now you've got good speed in both spots out there. Reyes at second, Infante at first. This is where Hanley needs to start coming through and and and, and, and showing how good he is. Uh, you know, especially you know, especially when the team is down a little bit, you're missing you know Bonifacio, you're missing some of your key guys. Hanley has to be the guy that steps up, and, and he is swinging the bat good. I don't want to take that away from him, but he has to. Start, you know, these balls he's getting away, he's fouling off. Those have to start being in play as we speak. Fouls that one back to the screen. Yeah, it's we talked about it a, a few weeks ago. David Wright, who's having a, a, a tremendous year, finally dipped below 400. He's in the 390s now. But Hanley has more RBIs than David Wright. Right. Hanley got about four or five more RBIs. So yeah, he has a lot of opportunities. Yeah, yeah. You know. Of course, Wright's also being walked a lot. Of course, I wouldn't pitch to David Wright right now <laughs> with that lineup like that. Runners go, double steal, throw to third is high. Reyes is safe. In fact, Reyes was almost past the bag when the ball arrived. Well, we're kind of slow and deliberate to the plate. That's why he kind of holds the ball a little bit, trying to disrupt your rhythm. But when you have fast, fast guys like the Marlins do, doesn't matter about that. They going. You, you ask Reyes right now. He'll tell you it's a hundred percent easier to steal off Bumgarner, go to third than it is being on first trying to steal second. No doubt. Now, if Hanley Ramirez can put it in play on the ground up the middle, he'll at least drive in a run. There's one out. The infield up the middle is back. Fastball up and in. Our Toyota trend. Marlins 19 and 8 when stealing one base. Two or more, the odds get better. 
So on that one play, the odds really got better. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> That's why we dropped in the Toyota trend right there. Here's the 2 1 coming. And it's 2 and 2. Baumgartner thinking strikeout right now. The problem, if he gets it, then they'll put Stanton on pitch Lomo. This is why this is so important for Hanley here. Foul tip and down goes the home plate umpire. Mark Wagner. I'm not sure where he took it, but it sure looks painful. Boy, the entire umpiring crew. Oh, off the left shoulder. And you know, umpires and catchers, they'll tell you the same thing. They got all that stuff, protective gear on, and it usually finds a spot where there isn't anything. It's amazing, right? Yeah. That dropped them. Anytime you see an umpire go down, uh, they're struggling. But I've, I've seen so many over my years go down, and you wonder how the heck they get back up and stay in the ball game. They're, but tough. they're tough. Yeah, they, they are, are tough guys. Because it's not like a, a player who can take a half inning off on the bench or even go out to left field and walk it off. If you're the home plate umpire, you got to get right back up and start calling balls and strikes yeah. again. And that's always tough because now you wonder where he's at. Is, is he is he into the you know is he into the game or is yeah, he worried about his shoulder? If you're handling right now you got to say you're okay. You, yeah. you don't, you don't want to show like you're concerned. Right. Yes. <laughs> if you're the hitter. <laughs> you definitely got to say hey, hey you good. <laughs> well Hanley's been able to come through in this spot. Reyes at third base Infantes at second there's one out you can see the giant infields back. Bumgarner looking for a strikeout Hanley looking for contact. Two and two. Always in motion is Ozzie Gian on the bench. I love it. Foul back. Another thing about Ozzie when we have so many shots and he's looking at somebody talking about here getting on guys but he knows everything that's going on in the game. You know, he talked about learning the National League again. You know, getting 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 himself in tune with it, and because he he managed so long in the American League, and it's tough. There's so much that's going on, double switching, uh, you know, and, and, and things like that that come out throughout the game. Um, but he's always into it. I, I spoke to him before the game, and it was just good to go in there and see, him relax a little bit. But you know, he's talking about his lineup. He's talking about you know guys, uh, you know, getting going and, and, and things like that. And like you said, Tommy, he's always there, ready. Two two. Ground ball, base hit, left field. Reyes scores. Here comes Infante, held at third. Hanley produces a run, and it's 2 1 Fish. And here comes Stanton. Good AB by Hanley Ramirez, who we showed you good numbers in these situations over 60%, getting that run in. Hung in there, got a decent pitch to hit. And now, if you're if you're Gary Thurman at first base, you're telling Hanley, don't steal. Please. Please, please just stay, stay here because if he gets to second base, now they put Stanton on. Stay yeah. at first base. Give Big Giancarlo. See, it's easy. You just say Big Mike. Right. Give Big Giancarlo <laughs> a chance to swing the bat. Don't come out the same, but yeah. I, I still like it. So he's swinging the bat. But that's the type of bat that can get Hanley going. Uh, that's what you want to see from him. I know you you see all the foul balls, but Bump Brown is a tough pitcher. So that, that type of bat, you get four or five foul balls, you get yourself comfortable. Uh, and sort of relaxed and get into the bat and it, and it keeps you moving. A, a pitcher bat is always one of those bats that allows you uh, to, to, to get going. And hopefully this is something to get Hamlin's going, uh, especially, as, uh, you know, as I said, he, he, he's a big guy in this lineup. And if he gets going, uh, then it seems everybody else sort of follows suit. And you saw where all the pitchers in that at bat were. Pitch number eight was right down the middle. Yeah, Bumgarner. This A plus move. Hey, right now he's hoping. <laughs> yeah, he's hoping Hanley steals. 
This is not the A move. No, anymore. and then he might try to if he if he got Hanley, then he would try to pick off Infante somehow at third, <laughs> just to end the inning. Stanton doubled against him in the second, and that pitch is outside. Giancarlo Stanton in his brief career against Madison Bumgarner, and both these guys are just 22. Is five for seven with four doubles. As he, he's going out further and further. <laughs> and really, this is just playing into the way Giancarlo has has swung the bat. And I know you've had a chance to watch him in spring training or in, in BP. It's all he's been doing. Yeah, I mean, he hit the ball the other he way. He hits the ball hard out the way, hitting the ball to center field, and that's the way you take BP. That's the way that keeps you, you know, keeps you locked in. Uh, in this situation, if I'm Bumgarner, I don't really want to pitch to him because you're dealing with a guy in low mode coming up next. Even though he has good success against lefty, against Bumgarner, he still has, a, you know, the issue with the knees, and he's a double play candidate. This right here shows you the respect that they're giving to Stanton. They're not even close with anything. See, Lomo should take this as an unintentional intentional yeah. walk. Well, 3 0 dusted him off there. He came in tight twice with fastballs. And so the bags are loaded, and here comes Morrison. You're absolutely right, Cliff. And, and I guarantee there are times it happened to you. They, you know they didn't want to pitch that guy because they would rather pitch to you. Right. And you know it, it, it makes you mad. I, I, I have a situation with it goes back to when I faced Roy Oswald a couple times, and Roy was just flat out hit you. He didn't mess around. He, well, that's when he had Roger Clemens in. Roger probably was in his ear saying, "Hey, son, why waste four pitches? Hit him." <laughs> and those, you know, but you know it's just those it's, those things come up, and guys are just rather face the next guy. Now Morrison. Lomo hit a ball in the air to deep left in the second. If he is able to do that here, he would drive in a run. There are so many positive things that can come out of this situation. Individually for Lomo, if, if he were to come through with a gapper and, and hit the ball well, team wise, uh, a real positive thing for, for a lefty to get the big hit off Bumgarner. That's a strike, and Bumgarner now in control with a count 0 and 2. Infante single follow Reyes. Hanley with an RBI single after the double steal. And Bumgarner went 2 and 0 and then nearly hit Stanton on the next two pitches. So it's 0 and 2. Bumgarner wastes one. Giants obviously looking for a ground ball. Bumgarner as well would love a strikeout here. You've got uh, Solano on deck. But of course it was Solano who drove in the first run with an RBI single in the second in his first major league start. Morrison a little tapper. They'll go to second, get one. The relay not in time, and the ball gets loose. Here comes Hanley. He's going to score. Two runs across. Four one. Couple of choices for Pill. He could have gone to the plate, tried to double play that way. He tries to go the other way, gets the out at second, but then the throw gets away at first, and that allows Hanley to run. Lomo going hard up the line. Yeah, he's too. busting it. You know, and, and with Pill in that situation, Tommy, he doesn't get the opportunity to play every day. So those type of that, you know, those situations that come up right away, split split second type of you know situations, and uh, he, he he went for second. Uh, thinking they can turn the double play with Lomo, but Lomo came out the box and say busting it. So good for him. Solano fouls a pitch off. You always can, you always can smell that RBI when you when you hit with guys on base. You smell those RBI opportunities. Bum near or not? Yeah. Well, I mean that's you know it's the one thing that we've seen consistent with Logan Morrison, whether he's banged up and he usually is, he still plays hard and he still 
is 100 percent. Yes, he is. And again, the, the team that's made the most errors in the major leagues gets hurt by another error. Error charges shortstop on that throw that got away at first. Lead the league in, in, yeah. in, 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 in errors at 49. That's like 50th uh, error of the season. And for a team that's built around its starting rotation and some team speed, that's not a good good sign. Pitches up and it's one and two. So it's 4 1. Marlins on top. Boy, the importance of making contact, too. And Lomo's at bat. And he had two strikes on him, so he had to bear down right there in that situation. You always have to bear down, especially against Bumgarner, as that slinging lefty that he's throwing. He's throwing that. Morrison running on the 1 2 pitch, and it's fouled back. He's feeling a little froggy today. <laughs> he thought he went in standing up right there. He felt good about somebody. I'll <laughs> probably say get back over the first place. <laughs> I think Lomo just guess figured that Bumgarner was not going to throw over to first base. You get that one shot though, he can't do it now. Solano, a, a good at bat, keeps fighting off fastballs. Rich, you go back to spring training, and, and we saw Donovan Solano and. Donnie Murphy, they got a lot of playing time in the infield. And, you know, there was a debate who was going to make the ball club, and Solano had a tremendous spring training. And Donnie Murphy did a good job, but uh, it's one of those things that everybody remembered the job that Solano did, Ozzy in particular. And Solano wasn't tearing it up at Triple A when he got called up. He wasn't hitting 300. He was in the mid 200s. Hello, Pop. But you know, the one good thing about this spring training that that, that the Marlins had was. Their role guys had the opportunity to play. They had some guys that was on the shelf a little bit, and that was, you know, that sort of opened the doors for these guys to get a lot of playing time. Bogart throws a changeup. Solano strikes out, but the fish with a nice inning, three runs in this third inning, and a 4-1 lead. Ramirez picking up an RBI and the Marlins have a 4 1 lead at and trivia question on this Saturday afternoon for San Francisco Giant to hit 50 or more home runs in a season 50 or more home runs by a San Francisco Giants Melky Cabrera drops down a bunt. And Burley vacuums it up and fires the first in time. That's a gift right there. I'm really for stunned. Mark Burley. I mean, here's Cabrera. He's over 600 career against Burley. Yeah, bunting on a gold glover. Three time gold glover. Get that. How about the fact that he hits him well? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's amazing. Take your chance. <laughs> and this year, he's one of the best in baseball against lefties. He was 
well over 400 coming into the ballgame against any lefty, let alone one named Mark Burley. Now Posey takes a strike. By the way, on that trivia, let's throw I mean, I know Mays, when he was in New York with the Giants, but I think he hit over 50 in San Francisco, too. I don't think he ever did. You don't I, think he did? I don't think Willie Mays ever hit over 50. So you think 50. it's Bonds? I would have to say it's Bonds. I mean, what about, I mean. Matt only, Williams only, would have in 94. You're right. Or could it be, it couldn't be Jeff Kent. McCovey, Cepeda? I was going to say McCovey. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I would have to go with Bonds. Oh, that's, that's, that's my point. Posey drops the bad head down. He got a lot of that one. Coglin going back, reaches up, makes the catch. That's one of those balls clip as an outfielder. You can't really judge by the swing, can you? No, you definitely can't because that ball was down. He stayed through it. He went down and got it. Uh, and, and, and Chris uh, did a great job of holding his ground a little bit. He, came, he took one step in, but then he got on his horses and, and got back to the ball. But this part gives you a chance to to just ride out. Once you, once you decide you have to go get a ball, you got a lot of room to go out there and do it. This is all brand new for Chris Coggin also. Yes. You know, being the fact that he just got called up and now his opportunities. But, you know, he has to learn this park, and he has to put a lot of time in at BP with balls off the bat. That's why when I when I told Solano, hey, just just follow Coggin around, Coggin looked at me like, oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been talking about everybody settling in and getting used to the new ballpark. Right. But you're right. Coglin just got here he just and got in it. center field, no less, too. And it's tough. I mean, you know, you bring balls off the bat, and it's always tough. Coglin will get another chance, though so this one not as challenging. He's there. Mark Burley pitching to the park and getting three outs and seven pitches. Space One, Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Bennett Auto Supply. Our prices bring you in and our people bring you back. And by Five Hour Energy. Five Hour Energy salutes the troops. Saturday afternoon in Miami, coming closer to a Saturday night, 4 1. Marlins lead the Giants in the bottom of the fourth. And back to work against Bumgarner. Those Chris Coglin, John Buck, and Mark. Burley, Cliff Floyd sitting in, Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton, and uh, here's Chris Coglin, bounced into a fielder's choice his first time up. Breaking ball from Bumgarner is a strike. On Big Fox, you have a, a primetime game, baseball night in America, returning again this Saturday. That's a 7:15 start. For those of you. Wandering around tonight and looking for some baseball. You have a chance to watch the Phillies or the Cardinals. That one fouled back to the screen. You 
as well they have the Cubs and the Pirates. The Angels and Seattle. Rockies and Reds. Astros Dodgers. Here's the 0 2. And Bumgarner misses way outside. One team in the East that has played already. The Mets got a masterpiece from Johan Santana and shut out the Padres 9 0. A four hit shutout for Johan Santana, 96 pitches. And a grand slam from Mike Nikias. Tough roster right there with the Mets. Vinny Rotino, a Marlin briefly, hit his first big league home run. Yeah, a long time professional player, minor league player, in his first major league home run today for the best. It's always great stories when you have guys who've been around a long time get a chance. And the Mets, everybody thought in the spring training, I mean, I didn't give them the Mets. I thought they would lose 99 games. You know, you predict the guys to lose, and all of a sudden, uh, you, you know, you see these guys, and they're and they're right in the thick of everything. That NL East is turning into something else. Coughlin pulls a ground ball to first. Brett Pill steps on the bag. All right, let's find out who the first San Francisco Giant to hit 50 home runs in a season was. That's our AT&T trivia question. Cliff settled on Bonds. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I went McCovey. I'm going with Mays, but. Still not real confident in that choice. Tommy got it. Hey, what? You're right. Tommy. Hey, all right. You are so right. Hey, say hey. <laughs> so right. <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause. Too. Now, Cliff, you played there when it was enclosed. Tommy, you played there before it was enclosed and after. Hey, enclosed or not enclosed, 50 home runs in that place. Unbelievable. It was not a, a, a hitter friendly place. Totally agree with you, Tommy. I hated going there. I, I mean, it, listen, candlestick, pack bell, it doesn't matter. I just didn't feel good anywhere on the West Coast, especially when you went across over over the bridge over to Oakland and played in the Coliseum. Bad place to play, also. I'm, d I'm done with that, that part of California. I'm, I'm <laughs> very comfortable where I am right now, but just didn't, never felt good in those parks. I, I don't know. I was cold. It was wet. Pop up. Posey against the aquarium again. What do they call it, Rich? You're from that area they, in, in Oakland, the heavy air. The what marine layer. The marine, marine layer, yeah. yeah. They can have the marine it's layer. A, it's a little thicker and colder in San Francisco than, than Oakland, but still, for you, it's tough. It's well, because you, you wake up, you go outside, you walk around, you have a, you know you have a nice lunch, and you get ready to go to the park. You go, wow, it's a beautiful day. If you go north of San Francisco, it's the marine layer. <laughs> that's where you get into the hot tubs and the, and that's where the fun starts. Here's the the one two swing and a miss, and Buck goes down. Mark Burley comes up. Marlins had a three run third inning against Madison Bumgarner, and that was after Burley struck out for the first out of the inning. That other game tonight on Big Fox that uh, you might want to catch. The Rays and the Red Sox. That's a that's a good pitching matchup. You see the pitching matchup. Yeah, Beckett and Price, and there was a, a little bit of uh, fireworks that went on last night mm -hmm. between those two teams. Matt Joyce hit a hit a grand slam last night. Beckett has pitched well his last couple times after the whole golf gate incident, which I thought he could have. You know, kept quiet a little bit. I mean, I, everybody is entitled to the off day, of course. But when you have, when you nurse an injury, yeah, you know, maybe you want to chill out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We all know Josh Beckett, though. No harm, no foul. No, he, he's going to go out and give some good outings. That's what he does. But you know, I guess they, they was questioning him at a bad time. You know, Tom, and sometimes you get caught in the moment and say some things you, should, you, you don't want to say. See, it would be one thing if a if a pro golfer who had a bad lap was out playing baseball before a round of golf in a in a tournament. Getting loose. Yeah. Right. That would be another thing if they were winning early on when that happened. <laughs> well, you're right about that. I mean, if they're ten games over in first place in the East, it's not a story not at all. 
two and two. I know Burley struck out in the third, but he he got deep in the count. He forced Bumgarner to throw a lot of pitches or more than he would like to against the opposing pitcher. And it takes a while to get rid of Burley here in the fourth. Four in the books. Four one Miami. In spring training and had a big fan there in manager Ozzie Guillen. It was a shame that kid don't make the clubs out of spring training. He's the best player we have overall. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, out of 60 players we bring in camp, he was the best one. Uh, he opened a lot of people's eyes. Uh, he put himself in the re in the great play because he just went to camp just to fill it up a hole. Now he's opening our eyes in everybody. Uh, having an opportunity to have a, a career in the big league. Uh, we're going to give him the opportunities. It's about taking opportunities and taking advantage of the opportunities. And I think this kid so far is doing pretty good. And guys, even if that opportunity puts him in a spot where he never played before, except for one game in the minor leagues, he told me it was three innings in Palm Beach. He played for the Cardinals then. And because of an outfield collision, that opened up a spot and the manager looked and threw him out to left field for three innings. And he took balls for a couple of days and Great to see him have success. What a week, his debut, then his first hit, then his first RBI, and now his first start. That's great stuff, Craig. And for Donovan Solano, it's been quite a week. Quite a nice series here against the Giants. A big key hit in this one. In a 4-1 Miami lead. And I think now, guys, we're seeing Mark Burley pitching to the game. He's got a three-run lead. A lot of balls in the air now. A lot of early contact. This is uh, how Burley operates. He keeps the ball down. He keeps the ball around the plate. He, he, he sort of allows you to, to to think you can get every pitch, and that's the one thing that makes him effective. Low up, low down, low off the plate. Uh, you know, and, and when you do those type of things, uh, then you can pop that fastball. It looks like 95, but it's only 84. You know, 85, 86, and there you go. You know, actually that was a little change up at 78, but. You know that's the one thing about Burley that, that that makes you think a little bit comfortable 0 for four. Uh, he's been doing his whole career. Jam shot. Burley's <laughs> gonna have to get over. Nice toss by Morrison. Leads Burley right across the bag. Time now for the Just for Men Auto Stop foolproof stats. Angel put gone for the Gigantes. Last five games here in South Florida. 9 of 23, 4 of 9 with runners in scoring position. The Giants are counting on Pagan. You can count on Just for Men Auto Stop for foolproof results. Manuel Burris doubled and then scored in the third inning. Burris takes a strike. We laughed uh, in, in Burley's last outing. He was against Jamie Moyer. He was the young kid. And, yeah, right. and today he's the elder statesman against Bumgarner, who's 22 and Burley's 33. Well, the funny thing is, I asked Burley before the start because he faced Moyer a lot 
when Burley was with the White Sox and Moyer was in his prime with Seattle. I asked him, did you learn anything watching him? And Burley said, nah, because I never thought I'd be compared to him. He said, I always thought I threw a lot harder than he did. I never thought I'd throw as slow as I'm throwing now. <laughs> he said, I always thought I'd have a fastball like I did when I was 21. This well, goes to show you. I'll tell you what, when he was 22, which is Bumgarner's age, Mark Burley was 16 and 8 with the White Sox that year. He's 1 and 2 on Emmanuel Burris. Ground ball short. Reyes just gobbles it up. And that's what Burley is doing. He's just compiling outs. He has retired the last seven in a row. Randy St. Clair in the dugout. This series concludes tomorrow. And then on Monday, it's a special 1 o'clock edition of a Military Monday. An Outback Steakhouse Military Monday. Military employees, active duty, reserve, National Guard, veterans, and dependents. You get a free ticket with each military ID that you bring to the Marlins Park box office on the day of the game. So tomorrow, bring your military ID and you'll get a free ticket with each one of those IDs. Right back to Bumgarner who spears it, flips it, and Reyes is out number one in the bottom of the fifth. Marlins have made uh, Bumgarner work a little bit. First couple of innings, he threw 26 pitches. The, the next two innings, he threw 51. So they've seen him a little bit more. That ball was hit well by Reyes. It's always going to be a good fielding pitcher, but you know, I, I was talking about it earlier in, in, in pregame. When you, when you have a guy like Bumgarner who has really good stuff, you have to see what he's featuring. You have to go out there and, and sort of see it, and then you make the adjustments to him. That's how good he's been. So, uh, you know, when you say he's, he's taking pitch, they're taking pitches, Tommy. It makes a great point because you know the Marlins went out and said, "Hey, you know, he's around the plate, but is he throwing strikes?" Um, and, and now they're taking advantage of it, as we see with the four-one lead. Cliff, explain this uh, term with the Infante. He has quiet hands. He doesn't move much. He keeps his head still, and yeah. his hands. Just move a little bit. He already he almost has them in a hidden position. So all he wants to do is just make sure that they get going a little bit, not too much. Uh, you know where he gets big, and that's why he's had success. Back footed him with a breaking ball, and Infante went after it. Bumgarner has the first two outs. He has settled down now as he's retired seven in a row. And here comes Hanley in a, a big moment for Hanley. Was the RBI single in the third? We showed you that stat where Hanley was at 61 percent of driving in a runner at third with less than two outs this year. Now he's probably around 64, 65 percent. The major league average right now is 52 percent. That's probably going to be playable, and it is. Arias is down and he makes the catch. Bumgarner 
six pitch inning. Onward, upward to the sixth, 4 1 fish. Park on a Saturday afternoon and a big crowd on hand. Cliff Floyd is in the house. That's how big the crowd is tonight here in the booth. Rich Waltz along with Cliff Floyd and Tommy Hunt. It's been a good ball game. Yeah. The Marlins have executed offensively and Mark Burley is just flat getting outs right now. Yeah, he's doing his thing. I mean, he's 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 keeping the ball in the zone and he's pitching to uh, to the game and, and his strength. And that's the one good thing about Mark Burley that you love. Is he always pitches to a strength throughout the game, no matter what the situation is? Madison Bumgarner leads it off. Burley catches the outside corner with a breaking ball, and that's a four pitch out. Burley's been getting a seven, eight pitch innings, and all of a sudden he's retired eight in a row. Top of the order, a guy that he's not retired yet, and that's Gregor Blanco. Who is two for two? Blanco has only seven hits in the series. That's just it. And, he, and this is game three of a four-game set, so he may get to double digits by the time he leaves here on su <laughs> on uh, Sunday. Can't have a hard time getting him on a charter flight wherever they go next. Look at that average right there against Marlins, six thirty-two. They go back home and take on Arizona. And the Marlins dive back into. The East. Now the Marlins have had a terrific month of May. The fish with a win last night improved to 17 and 7 in May. But the Nationals are coming. June brings not only some division play with the Phillies, but as Craig and Jeff Conine outlined in Marlins Live, June is filled with contenders from the American League, the Rays, the Red Sox. The Blue Jays. Burley knocks it down. Let's hope he's okay. And another hit for Blanco. Who was this guy, Blanco? Man, he was a guy that was not in the big leagues last year. He was a guy that was in Triple A last year. And Burley, remember, he got hit his last start as well. More in the foot. Hard to tell where this got him. If it got him in the arm, a little in bit the of stomach, a little bit of the midsection, a little bit, I think got a little bit of everything. If he got him in the gut, he's yeah, fine. Yeah, he's fine. But you see Lomo over at first base. He's rubbing everything he has, his glove, his body, all over on on Blanco over there at first. Trying to rub some of those hits off of him. 
Blanco has hits in his last five at bats going back to last night. It's a one out single. He's at first. And here's Terrio. Twice Terrio has bounced to third. In the first inning, that started a double play. In the third inning, it ended the inning. We'll see the second half of the Terrio Fontenot show when the Phillies come to town. Mike Fontenot has surfaced with the Phillies. The Phillies is, is, is surfacing with everybody at this point. They're trying to find, you know, a fine mixture when well, you yeah. have your big boys out of lineup in Utley and Howard. Juan Pierre is doing a good job. Ty Wigginton's getting some starts. Freddie Galvis playing a little bit more. Yeah, he is. Pretty good. Also, Freddie Galvis is a good-looking player. We were impressed when we saw yes. him to start the year. Jaime Garcia for the Cardinals against Kyle Kendrick of the Phillies tonight. That game in St. Louis. Terrio jumps on that off-speed pitch into center. Coglin has it. Blanco stops at second, and now this is a matchup that everybody looked at when the game started. Melky Cabrera against Mark Burley. 17 of 27 in his career with a couple of homers. And Burley has retired him twice. He struck him out in the first. And Cabrera inexplicably tried to drop down a bunt in the fourth and bunted it right back to the mound. Now let's just say this right here. He's not going to be bunting now. No. He's this definitely not bunting in this situation. And it's a big at bat here. It's a three run game. Burley's been cruising, but now all of a sudden. Couple of hits. Two on and one out. Posey's on deck. I like that move by Omar Fonte in that situation right there. He sort of bluffed to go to second base. Maybe Milky Eyes goes with him a little bit and follows him over there as Burley gets ready to pitch. Cholula hot sauce spotlight player. You see Cabrera in May, the most hits in Major League Baseball this season. Center field, not too deep. Coglin gets around it, makes the catch, and everybody holds. Gemlin has to play to the camera, not the crowd. Let's go. Let's go. Get it this way. <laughs> there you go. Belt's <laughs> 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 gone bad. <laughs> hey, by the way, that was a, a non-play. For Chris Cogman, you don't get an error assist to put out anything. But the way he circled the ball to get himself in position to keep Blanco at second base. That's a that's a smart, that's a smart outfitter's play because you know uh, Blanco can run. And if you know a guy at third base makes it easier uh, for the hitter and Posey to you know throw a knockout there, easy run score. So you know, get around the play, do it fundamentally uh, sound, and uh, it makes everybody happy. 0 1 to Buster Posey. He's flied out twice. Now it's 0 2. Early trying to pitch around the two base hits for Blanco and Terrio. Posey, the young giant catcher. Seems like he's been in the big leagues longer than he has. He's just 25. Uh, just a, a huge part of their future, no question. You know, and, I, and I've seen them. I've seen them behind the dish a little bit, uh, catching balls and actually being out in front of the plate on, on, on plays at home plate. And he's definitely not blocking that plate, which I thought it would be opposite. I thought he would definitely say, you know what, in the heat of the moment, you don't know what you're going to do. But he's definitely not blocking that plate. He's. Well, the Giants really worked with him. In spring training, and, and Bruce Bochy laid down the law. Bochy would know he's a, a former big league catcher that they don't want him to put himself in a position as he did with that play last year. One thing about Bochy, though, he was a backup catcher and he had to block that play. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. I mean, <laughs> Brett Hayes, Matt Trainer, those are guys that always block the plate. You think about Hayes when 
Niger Morgan took a run at him. It was Hayes that suffered the brunt, and we saw Trainer flat numerous times. Yep. You know what? It, it's maybe one time in my my career I've ever hit a catch. I didn't like it either because you can, you know, with my injury history, you can always get hurt as the runner coming in also. The 2 2. Ground ball. Wow, Morrison was way off the bag, and Fonte waits, and he got back. Logan Morrison on a routine grounder to second, nearly ran out to second base. And Fonte had the patience to wait, and that was a near disaster. En español es presentado en SAP por Toyota. Cookie and Raúl join us now. Gentlemen, good afternoon. How are you hey, guys? Afternoon, Richie, Tommy, how are you guys? Hey, you know, we're doing pretty good, Cookie. We added a little power to our lineup today. <laughs> nice. We got Cliff Floyd over here. <laughs> hey, not too bad. Not too bad at That's all. That's for your car protection in the lineup. <laughs> yeah. Giancarlo Stanton again uh -huh. down the line. And around first he goes. Stanton continues to own. Madison Bumgarner. He's making this look easy. Six for eight in his career. Two doubles in this ball game. Five doubles total in those eight at bats against Bumgarner. I'll tell you, there's no question about it. That he's on a roll. This man, this month of May has been amazing. And Cookie, we talked. We talked about his power with home runs, but how about his power with the way balls get by infielders and then all the way to the outfield wall? Well, if the ball is hit to your right or to your left, you got no chance. The way when he connects, that ball is by you within, within seconds, and then the, it carries all the way to the fence. Have you ever seen ground balls? You know, I, I wish I would have hit a ground ball <laughs> in my lifetime that could reach the fence <laughs> the way the Stanton does. I mean, it's amazing. They look like torpedoes. But he's very comfortable right now on the plate. He's seeing good pitches. Morrison drives okay, okay. it. Right center. That's deep. And it's off the wall. Stan will score. Morrison's got a double. It's 5 1. Absolutely hit that ball right on the nose. And it's good to see that type of inning from uh, Logan Morrison. We need him back. He started to hit again. And then I'll tell you the way things are going right now. Our offense is really scoring some runs for our starting pitchers who have done a great job during the whole year, guys. You know, in that situation, I mean, he goes up, tries to pull the ball to the opposite field, so he has the right approach from the get jump. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? And, and just that right there in itself helps you in that at bat. So he got a fastball he liked up and was able to crush it to the gap. Back to back doubles, Stanton and Morrison to open up the bottom of the sixth inning. All right, guys, have a good show. Take care, guys. You too, fellas. Take it easy, folks. Now Solano with a runner at second. Nobody out. Let's see if he can move the runner up. Bumgarner knows that. He came inside on him. It's 0-1.
these were some of the little things that you heard Ozzie speak of those about the way Solano impressed everybody in spring training and these were situations little things like this he was able to perform too. Chops and foul. The thing about Solano is he's not a, a 21 or a 22 year old kid who has very little experience. He's 24 and he was in the Cardinals organization. You see the right hander in the bullpen since 2005. So coming up in the Cardinals organization, every step of the way, he got to Triple A in 09. He's on his way back to the dugout right now, but spent parts of the last three seasons in Memphis, Triple A with the Cardinals. And you know, it's always it's sometimes it takes you a little bit longer to get your opportunities. And I think when you find yourself, uh, you know, in the spring training, as Solano found himself this spring with the Marlins. Uh, you know, as we talked about, you know, he had, he had the opportunity to play more and he opened some eyes. And that's what you have to do in spring training. Even if you don't make the team, you know, you keep it in the back of Ozzy's mind and the organization's mind to say, hey, you know, first time we get an opportunity to bring this guy up, he has to come because he did everything we asked him to do in spring training. Chris Coglin now, check swing roller foul. Coglin is bounced into a fielder's choice. And grounded to first. 5 1, Miami on top. Chris seems so more relaxed, so more confident about the second time through. And sometimes it takes you to go through what he went through, a little adversity, to go back down and get yourself right a little bit. And then come back up and say, hey, I don't want to go back down anymore. This is it. This is my opportunity. I'm going to keep, I'm going to stay here, and, and I'm going to help this team. You know, you go through that period as a youngster. You win it. You win the, you know, rookie of the year. Pressure comes on you now, and you're on the spotlight. You expect to come through every day, and then you know, you get, you, and when it doesn't happen, you wonder where the heck did it go that quick? You know, I just I just went home for a couple months, and now I'm coming back, and it's not there. You know, little reality check, but I, it, it's good to get him to see him back in the lineup. He looks good. And I think it's going to help this team. Sends a pop out into left center field. Pagan comes on and makes the catch. Two outs. Here comes John Buck, and here comes the Coors Light freeze can. Ah, the play at the plate. Giancarlo Stanton trying to get Emmanuel Burris. There's your freeze. You saw he beat Buck to the corner of the plate. That the Giants only run of the ball game. That was the third, and that was the Frostbrook Coors Light freeze can. Well, the Giants figure why pitch to John Buck when they can pitch to Mark Burley with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Bruce Bochy's kind of tried to piece things together with uh, Pablo Sandoval uh, out of his lineup. They expect him back in 10 days, two weeks. Of course, his bullpen hurt with the uh, Tommy John surgery that Brian Wilson had. So he's had to work things out down there. Yeah, we look at the lineup. Uh, you, like you say, you're missing Big Panda, um, you know, but. But the fact that you know you, you haven't had consistent play from your first base position, whether it's been Huff, whether it's been Peel, Belt hasn't shown up. And that's the, you know that, that that's key for that lineup. Early uh, busted his bat and lines it to first. Marlins get a run, back-to-back -back doubles by Giancarlo and Lomo.
Marlins 5 1 fish on top into the seventh goes Mark Burley just 75 pitches. He's got 10 ground ball outs. Reyes now at seven and Fonte now at six for hit streaks. And some nice at bats. Logan Morrison has driven in two of the five runs. And the Ramirez with a, a key single in this one. And Donovan Solano making his first start in left field. Solano with an RBI single in the second. All much to the delight of Lil Wayne. Who's actually chilling. Yeah, having a good time. Just relax. I wonder if he knew he was going to be sitting in front of a fish tank when he got to the game. Yeah? <laughs> he probably didn't know that. Here is Pagan. Cliff, you don't have uh, this for a Halloween costume in the closet somewhere, do you? No. Especially down here in South Florida where it's hot. On Halloween night, it's the last thing I'll have on. A Teletubby outfit? Yeah. Some things you just can't pull off. You but know. you know, they do pull off the Marlin caps on top quite nicely. And yeah, they, they seem to have a good time, you know, and the fans have taken to it. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I, I, right now, I don't care how, how, how nice and cool it is inside here, they're still hot. Liner left center, and neither Cogman nor Solano will get there. Solano cuts it off, makes the throw to second. And Pagan comes in with a double. Boy, <laughs> Pagan, Blanco, Cabrera. There are some giants that are just having great stays in South Florida. And even Pagan gives out a little low vista. He and Reyes are and they're having, teammates. Yeah, they're having fun with it. It's not, it's not anything uh, malicious. As, as you said the other day with the uh, pitcher from Houston. It's not like that knucklehead Wilton Lopez <laughs> in Houston who threw at Hanley and then mocked him with the Loviste on his way off the field. Wow. That was something. Certain things you can't do. Yeah. yeah. Certain things you just can't do. But these two, and, and Pagan and Reyes, I go back to the mess days. I was actually with both of them there. Pagan's one of those guys. We, we talk about guys that finally get a chance to play. Pagan was in the big leagues for a while and never really got a chance to to play on an everyday basis. He was always known as a pretty good outfielder. And then with the Carlos Beltran's health issues, he got his chance. And he talked about it every day. When I was there, he that's the one thing he wanted was the opportunity to play every day, which every player wants, but you sort of know you're going to be a role player at some point and you accept it. He didn't accept it, and that's one reason he got an opportunity to play now. Uh, with the trade for Tories and, and him in all season, gave him opportunity to go to San Francisco and uh, you know get his chance to, to do his thing. Oh, uh, Burley's doing his thing right now. Pagan in a rundown. Hanley tags him out. Mark Burley is the best fielding pitcher in baseball. I'll tell you another reason why that was a good play is that the Marlins got the out quickly. One. Six. Now Jose closes the gap. Here comes Hanley. He puts the tag on, and in the meantime, Hill, who hit the ball, didn't get to second base. He he could only get to first. Right. Now, it starts with Burley, and then Reyes does a great job of running back, and that's the play you work on the spring training so much that you think never happens throughout the season, and it happens you know quite a bit. Remember, in Game One, the Marlins had a play, a rundown play, and, and Brett Hayes was late in getting the ball to third. So you're right. The 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 quick reactions by Burley to get the ball and then to force the runner back to second and get rid of it. All important. Letter high strike to Joaquin Arias. Just one of those many little things that Burley does, and it's the reason he's won 165 games. I'm telling you, Tommy, and I was going to say that, that, you know, some guys can field that ball. Into right, Stanton has it. Some guys can fill that ball and, and they go to first base automatically because it's comfort for him. Burley makes that play because he's been there a thousand times before and he knows that if he does everything right, he's going to get the out what he needs to be. He's a great example of what scouts will say and managers will say about a pitcher who manages the game. He pitches to the score. If it's a one run game, Mark Burley is. 
a little different than he is right now with a four run lead. Right now he can't get the ball. Back to the plate fast enough. Hector Sanchez is on deck. Well, you go back to the, the play that he made. If he gets out of this inning, you, you look at that play with a couple of hits that the Giants have. You know, they're looking at maybe scoring a, a big inning. Breaking ball fouled at the plate. I've always thought left handed pitching soft soft throwing guys had the best advantage because guys like to hit the fastball a lot. These guys always have you guessing and thinking and and worrying you know a little bit off the play here. Uh, and, and you know you're always looking back at the umpire to see if you know it, 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 you know what way you get that pitch you always ask an umpire was that a strike when you swung at it. How come there aren't more soft tossing right handers. Yeah that's a good question. I would think that you know when you. You know, when you look at the lefties, you would you would take some of these guys and say, uh, you know, let's let's take a little bit off that that 90 plus mile and, and throw 85, 86, and just have a little bit of control. Uh, you know, I don't know why. I'm glad it wasn't because then I wouldn't have the opportunity to play as much. I think <laughs> one of the reasons is there are a lot more right-handed hitters and soft tossing right-handers would probably probably have better success against left-handed hitters than, than right-handed hitters. That's, good and that's why some managers will actually play lefties. Against soft tossing lefties, even though Burley has a pretty good breaking ball, though he kind of counters that with a pretty good breaking ball. He's two and two. 